how much do you think you can buy this for? 13 cents. The snag is, it comes with at least $800 million of debt. It's the sort of thing that's happening a lot right now. And that's a big deal. Because a global property crisis can rapidly spread to the rest of the economy. Office buildings, hotels, and other commercial real estate projects around the world are going insolvent or being sold at knockdown prices. One investor has warned that the industry could face a trillion dollars in losses. This is the biggest real estate crisis since 2008. A lot of office space around the world is now redundant. There's too much of it. And that's why we're seeing such massive value declines. There's a building in Manhattan owned by Blackstone that's being marketed at a roughly 50% discount on the loan. Aon Center, the third tallest building in LA, sold in December for a 45% discount compared to what it sold for a decade earlier. There's been Chinese developers run into trouble and some of them have been threatened with the loss of their buildings as well. So this is happening around the world and will continue to happen. So what exactly is going on? At the heart of all of this is how most commercial real estate projects are funded. So a lot of these buildings are funded largely by debt. In a game of Monopoly, you can't make money if a property has a mortgage. But in real life, landlords use rental income to pay for debt. If there are no renters and not enough money, then landlords have a problem. And the banks then loan them the money. The knock-on consequence for the economy is job losses from those banks, less credit available, which means less investment into things like factories, warehouses, growing your business, and then in turn, potentially further job losses because instead of the economy growing, the economy starts slowing. The roots of the 2008 financial crisis also lay in plunging property values. A lot of banks were exposed to extremely risky lending for the subprime mortgages tied to residential housing mainly. When a region goes into a recession, this time, it's more like the savings and loans crisis that hit the U.S. in the 1980s and 1990s, where again, small regional banks or trusts advanced lots of money to real estate. Everything went wrong, loans soured, and in the end, they demolished a bunch of the properties. It saved more money than to actually try and find a buyer to buy them. Some of the solutions to the 2008 crisis actually sowed the seeds of today's problems. When the world was in financial meltdown, central banks decided that the best thing to do was cut interest rates to almost giving away free money to people. And the aim of that was to stimulate the economy. It became harder to make money from bonds, so investors looked for other places to invest. In many cases, what happened is that money went into alternative investments. So a lot of that money went into real estate. At one point, WeWork was the largest private tenant in New York City, which says a lot. They were bigger than a lot of the major banks. And that just kind of showed the insane growth and capital that flowed into the space. Investors thought offices were such an attractive investment because they were betting on the fact that a lot of companies were growing, would be locked into these long-term leases, and rents would continue to rise for the foreseeable future. As new developments sprung up, all that investment changed the face of cities around the world. But landlords weren't counting on what came next. The World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus a global pandemic. Offices just went completely dead and empty across major cities, New York, London, San Francisco, Toronto. Nobody knew how it would unfold or whether people would come back to the office. So landlords would work out agreements with their lenders called extend and pretend, where the idea is let's just extend the loan as it is and ignore any potential short-term valuations that might have fallen because of the pandemic. The hope was that offices would be buzzing with employees again before the deals had to be renewed, but that hasn't happened. U.S. office occupancy rates today are about half of what they were pre-pandemic. And while Asia and Europe are doing better than the U.S., they're still far below what it was. Lenders in the U.S. have a trillion dollars of commercial real estate loans coming due this year. If the landlords can't find the money, then it could create massive losses for the banks. We're already starting to see that play out.
New York Community Bank Corp stopped on 41%. In early 2024, it started with New York Community Bank, which increased the amount of money it had to put aside to cover potential losses tied to the commercial real estate sector. And shortly after, Azora Bank in Japan also saw the same thing with its shares plunging because it was putting more money aside to cover losses tied to US commercial real estate, especially offices. We're gonna talk, of course, about Azora because that was a huge plunge yesterday. That happened in the Bank of Germany, Canada as well, where insurance firms and pension funds started to put aside more money or write down more losses tied to commercial real estate in the US. These write-downs in the U.S. are starting to have global impacts and investors are reacting very aggressively when they see these losses being recognized. Share prices are plunging, bond prices are plunging. Some of this was predictable. Low interest rates can create risks. People at the Federal Reserve have been worried for at least eight years about commercial real estate and the threat of a bubble, but in a way it is the acceptable byproduct of the larger picture, which is to try and cure the economic woes from the financial crisis. Nothing really was done to, to prevent commercial real estate prices soaring. It's going to put a lot of stress on the owners of these properties. The banking agencies are very focused in helping the banks. What will really allow more owners and lenders to skate through this crisis is if interest rates start to come down more to a level that is more manageable. If that doesn't happen, and the economy in the US in particular still seems to be running quite hot, there's no really easy solution. The financial stability system seems quite secure at the moment. One of the reasons for that is lenders demanded larger down payments from borrowers, which means they have more protection. But things could still go badly wrong. If a few banks have too much of this debt, they could go under. And when banks start going under, a panic could ensue that sparks a wider financial crisis.